Hey everybody, I'm Jason from Mid-America. I'd like to give you an update on what we've been calling Project 580 Quad. Let's take a look. You may not know, but here at Mid-America, we purchased Link, one of the most trusted names in the plow industry. A couple years ago, we moved it down here to Iowa. We're right in America's heartland. We're easy to get to. We're 20 minutes west of Des Moines. We do everything right here. We are an American-owned, American-manufactured company. Now, on this plow, we do plows three different ways. We will sell you the plow. We will sell you the plow and a mounting plate for your tractor, your carry, your carry tractor. Or in this case, for this customer, we did a complete turnkey solution. The tractor came in as a, as a base 580 quad, and it's leaving set up 100% with the link on it. Let's talk about the custom mounting job we did. When this tractor came in, had the factory drawbar in it, valve stack in the normal position. We designed our mounting plate around all of that. As you can see, we're bolting in the standard bolt holes along the back of the 580. What you can't see is, is we have a custom drawbar in underneath the tractor. We pin into the original drawbar position then we manufacture and machine fit a drawbar to this mounting plate so your force of the pull of the plow is going back into the drawbar. The other thing that we do with our mounting plates is wherever the main link is for the bottom pull is, through the front side of the mounting plate, we'll have a clevis hookup. So if you are going to put a pull tractor on this ever, you can pin your cable right to the mounting plate so you're not putting all that extra pry back through your tractor. You're putting it through the mounting plate, pulling it on the plow where it belongs. Lastly, one of the things we do is we actually manufacture a plate hose kit to move your valve stack up and out of the way so you can get to your remotes. One of the main complaints that I see on mounted plows from our competition is they put a mounting plate on, they do nothing with the valve stack, they're back in behind, you can't get the hoses in and out. It's just it's a customer problem, it's a customer nightmare. One of the things about sending your tractor here for a turnkey solution is we look at all this, we work with the customer, we figure out a good solution, we manufacture factory looking mounts, we paint, we do all that, we move it up out of the way so it's, it's useful every day. This customer also pulls an anhydrous bar with this tractor. When he gets ready for that time of year, he can walk up, set the plow on a rack, undo the bolts down the side, pull the pin on the drawbar, unhook the quick remotes, drive away, slide the factory drawbar right back in, and go back to use for a second application tractor. There's a lot of misnomers around a mounted plow about how long it takes to take the plow out off. If it's done correctly and thought of, well thought of for the engineering as you go into it, you can do this in a matter of hours. These tractors are too expensive to have as a one application unit most of the time, which is why people sometimes wonder about mounted plows. Here at Mid-America, we can custom manufacture a mounting plate, draw bar, valve locate, whatever we need to to make your application work for you. Hi, I'm Justin Brown with Mid-America Trenchers. I was gonna walk you through a couple of uh, features on this uh, Link 175 on the back of this 580 quad. Uh, one of the things you might have noticed, Jason went through the, the custom mounting plate and the way that we did that. Uh, you may have noticed about the mounting plate, as compared to some of the other installations you have seen, this mounting plate is, is integrated and close to the tractor. It's not sitting back three feet or so tied into the drawbar uh, that way. The closer that we can get to the tractor, what we can do is minimize the amount of leverage that the, the plow is putting on the tractor and make for a nicer, easier better pull. Um, 20 degrees of swing on the swing cylinders on this plow. That's both power for backing into outlets, um, you know, lining up and, and getting ready to go. And, and when you're running, that's in float. So that allows you to, to, to make nice tight quarters. Um, one of the questions I get asked a lot is how the double link works as compared to uh, cantilevers especially uh, and parallel beams. The way the double link works, this is your vertical link 
This remains pretty much up and down through the motion of this. Uh, the rear link, although it's up right now to, to set this down, remains in float. All of your grading is done through your front two links, uh, through your front link with these two beads. This remains in float. This boot, shank, and tip remains flat as you're traveling through the ground. We're going to show that motion just a little bit later uh, in the video. Uh, so this moves up and down. There's no pitching of the boot. There's nothing involved uh, there uh, for, for grade deflection. It all moves smoothly up and down based on the motion of these cylinders right here. Coming into play with the leverage that I talked about a little bit earlier uh, up there on the, the mounting plate is our adjustable shank. We have adjustments every six inches. The reason for an adjustable shank uh, is so that you can fine tune your depth, your pull based on your design uh, or your layout to, to maximize pull. The best pull is a straight pull. So you can set this shank to where you're going to be when you leave that outlet and when you get the end of your line. Uh, so that these links are nice and flat. You have a nice straight pull. You don't have links up in the air with a lot of leverage pulling and rocking this traction, uh, this tractor for, for grip um, and, and grading. It is nice straight pull, nice and easy to move. Uh, we do this mechanically through the adjustment of the shank and the articulation of the, the links on the plow rather than trying to do it hydraulically. One of the, uh, the options that we have here, everybody has a little bit of different GPS mountings, um, laser mountings, uh, chain drag mountings, um, however you want. On this guy right here, we have a, a, a level master slope sensor down here on the shank. Uh, we also have mounting on the other side. We can do a shank mounted, shank holder mounted GPS, shank holder, shank holder mounted laser, chain drags, uh, almost any accessory that you can imagine we can put on here. This customer opted for uh, a shank mounted GPS mount for his, uh, for his Trimble system. If you want to pay up and take a look at that. This one is hydraulically activated. Um, one of the big problems with these kind of shank mount is the height uh, and moving these around. Uh, as you can see, this one is on a cylinder. Uh, we can fold that guy down and get him out of the way. We also have an electric actuator option, uh, but here we went to go. Uh, hydraulic. Uh, one of the other options that we have up there is in, in uh, that works with that uh, GPS mount is we have two models of power feeder available, uh, four six uh, and four six eight uh, on our deluxe one. Uh, those are available. Those go right on top of the shank. Hang out here for your box. Uh, this customer uh, has has not put a power feeder on this one but we've got a set of rollers uh, to ease down into the box uh, for, a, for a side, uh, side feed on, on his box. Uh, these boxes are available depending on your plow model, four, six, eight, 10, 12, uh, anything you like. Uh, I'd like to spend just a minute on the, on the bottom of this shank uh, and, and show you some features here. Uh, the one thing that you can see right away, we have removable bottoms on the bottom of our shank, easy replacement. Uh, these and the bottom of our boxes are both made out of AR steel, so long life, great wear out of them, uh, but eventually no, no uh, cutting the bottom off the shank, you're just going to unbolt, rebolt, uh, and go right back to work because that's what it's all about. Uh, the other thing that I get asked about is, is the mold boards. Uh, each box has its own individual mold boards. These are not bad to change at all. Uh, by sizing each mold board to its individual box, uh, we make sure that we're, we're moving the dirt correctly, we get it out of the way for the box, we minimize smearing, uh, we make it pull a lot easier. Uh, it's, a, it's a feature you don't get uh, on 
some of the competition and, and some of the, uh, uh, the other budget plows out there. Um, the other thing, mow board angle. I get asked about this a lot. As you can see, we start this at a fairly moderate angle. Uh, we get that dirt out of the way, we get that cut made, we get it moving. Then we really ramp it up and, and get it after it's already loose and, and, and moved out of the way. Uh, this makes our plow pull a lot easier compared to most of them out there. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more refined approach uh, on how we, we look at that dirt movement. Okay, as you can see, we've wrapped up Project 580 Quad. We've run each set through some of the, uh, the features, uh, the options that we did for this customer. Uh, obviously, this one's been on a, on a Case 580 Quad. Um, we've done similar mounts on Challengers, on uh, John Deere, 9560 RT. John Deere was one of my favorites. Um, we've done them on John Deere dozers, cat dozers. Pretty much there's not too much of anything that, that's uh, of the right weight class and capabilities we can't mount something up for. So if you've got something, if you've ever wondered whether or not you could put a plow on it, get a hold of us, let us know. Uh, we'll work through the engineering, we'll get you taken care of. 515-789-2005 here at the office. Uh, of course, we're all over social media, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, the website, of course, www.buckeyetrenchers.com. Let us know what we can do for you.